Good morning, Gateway Church. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Welcome to Online Church, wherever you are watching from. We are watching together today. We are watching as one, as family, and we are going to join together and sing our praise and worship to Jesus, our King. So please, wherever you are, lift your voice, lift your hands and sing with us this morning. I find perspective there in the best and worst days of this life. You are always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise, and on the days the furnace finds my faith. You're the fourth within the flames. I don't need to know what the future says. Cause if the past could talk, it would tell me this My God is a finish yeah. If He did it before, He can do it again So I trust Him with what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness oh, 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 oh. Cause my hindsight says I can trust Him God is so faithful. We have a scripture to read this morning from Psalm 23, verse five to six. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell forever throughout all 
my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. We thank you that you're here with us, God. You're here with us right now, God. We thank you, Jesus. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I find my battles. Oh, oh, oh. There's a table that you've prepared for me oh, in the presence of my enemies it's your body and your blood you shed for me this is how I fight my battles oh, oh. and I believe you've overcome Jesus, 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. How are you doing today? It's so beautiful to be able to worship together. Acknowledge the fact that Jesus dwells in us and surrounds us. The presence of God is with us always. Amen. Well, today, just as we come around communion, I just want to encourage you with a passage of Scripture around our communion today. and The heart of, the heart of Jesus that, that now dwells in us. It says in Luke 22, 16 to 20. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. Verse 19, he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this, is, this cup is the new covenant between God and His people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. And I just want to encourage as we come around communion today, most of us who have been in church a while will acknowledge the fact that communion is times where we remember Jesus, remember who He is and what He's done for every single person on planet Earth. I just want to encourage you today that the heart of Jesus in, in this passage of Scripture is He sat down with His disciples to take communion, have the last supper together. Every time that He took the bread, He took the wine, His heart was He gave thanks to God for it. In this passage of Scripture, He's now encouraging us that it gave thanks to those things, to the, to the bread and the wine was a picture of Him. Therefore, in this moment, we give thanks to God for Him. So in this moment of communion this morning, just as you're sitting in a lounge room or wherever you are today, take a moment. Take the bread, take the cup. Give thanks to God for Jesus. Give thanks to God for His body. Give thanks to God for His blood that was sacrificed through the cross. And we remember Him. We remember everything He did, but more importantly, who He is in Jesus' name. Why don't you take your emblems this morning, the bread, the cup, whatever you've got at home today, and take a moment to give thanks. God, it's with humble and full hearts that we thank you, we worship you, and we give thanks. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, yes, it is. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are oh way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are yes you are yes you are oh you make the way in the wilderness god yes you 
you're touching every heart and I worship you I worship you you are here healing every heart I worship you I worship you oh you are here you turn Just as we're in this moment of worship this morning, I just want to take a moment to, to pray, pray with you. You know, we as a church, we, we truly believe in the power of prayer. If you've got things that you need prayer for today, you need things that you need God to come and, and meet with you, can I encourage you? You can enter your prayer needs in through our website, gc.org.au forward slash prayer. We want to pray with you, not just today, but through the week as well. 
If you've got things to praise about, we want to join with you and praise about those things as well. You can enter those praise points through the, through the website, through that address as well, that gc.org.au forward slash prayer. But today I, I wanted to, to speak into it to a couple of things today. You know, you, through the events of the last week, there may be some people who have had some things that have been, old hurts have been revealed through things that have been happening in the last week globally and both here within Australia. I just want to encourage you, our hearts are with you today. We're, we're with you through everything that, that you're going through, through the challenges right now. I, I, I want to pray for a couple of things today. Families, I want to pray for your family, for our church family. I want to pray for, for babies that are being carried right now in mother's wombs, that the hand of God, the peace of God, the power of God is on you and in you in Jesus' name. I want to pray for, for the health of people within our church body, that sickness has no place in your body in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, now, I also want to lift hurting people today. So why don't you close your eyes where you are today and just agree with me in prayer. Just lift up prayer in your lounge room right now in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for each and every single family that is connected to our church, that is connected to us as individuals. And we lift them up before you right now, Father God. We believe in your power, the power of the Holy Spirit, that you sent to us. And I pray right now, Holy Spirit, be at work amongst families, drawing families closer, drawing families together in Jesus' powerful name. Oh God, I pray for babies that are being carried right now. If you're carrying a baby right now, can I encourage you to just put, put your hand on your, on your stomach this morning. Holy Spirit, let the power of God be at work in the wombs of mothers that as they're growing, they're growing into healthy young babies. Let the, the power and the peace of God fall upon that entire family, all those families in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, oh God, I pray for, for health and, and sickness. God, I pray let, let the healer, the Holy Spirit be at work in every single family, in every single body. Let health and healing be revealed in Jesus' powerful name. We come against sickness in Jesus' name. And we say, sickness be gone in Jesus' powerful name. Oh God, I pray for every single person that is, that is hurting right now. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit that was sent by Jesus. He's with you right now. He's with you always, but He's with you right now. And I pray comfort, a Holy Spirit, minister to every hurting person. Holy Spirit. For every single hurting person, we are with you. We, the body of Christ is with you. We sit with you. We stand with you. We walk with you in Jesus' powerful name, just as the Holy Spirit guides and directs you through this time. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. Hey, church. Well, in a moment, we're going to have an opportunity to give into this morning's tithes and offerings. Um, I just wanted to let you know if you're visiting with us today that there is no obligation to give. Um, but if, if that is on your heart this morning, you're welcome to join with us as well. So as we come around giving, I just wanted to encourage you uh, from a Bible verse this morning from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. And it says, Don't save treasures for yourself here on earth. Moths and rust will destroy them, and thieves can break into your house and steal them. Instead, save your treasures in heaven, where they cannot be destroyed by moths or rust, and where thieves cannot break in and steal them. Your heart will be where your treasure is. You know, this morning, I want to encourage you, church, that giving is a heart action. You know, when our heart is in the right place, when our heart is in the right place, that generosity overflows. You know, when, when we love people the way that God does, when we see people the way that God does with His heart, with His love for them, you know, that causes generosity to overflow out of us and into them, into the people around us, into our family, into our local community. You know, when we love the church the way that God does, the beautiful local church, God ordained local church. You know, when we love and see the church that way, generosity overflows. You know, our heart for the house of God, it grows fonder and fonder and generosity 
overflows. You know, I want to encourage you this morning as well, that when you see yourself the way that God sees you, that you can be generous with yourself as well. You know, not seeing yourself as someone small without a purpose, but someone purposed by God. You know, this isn't about being over the top and spoiling ourselves. You know, but when we see ourselves the way that God sees us, you know, it allows you to dream. It gives you the license to dream. You know, dream bigger, that God would work through you, that His purpose in you would be achieved. And we can treasure God's purposes on our lives as well. You know, this morning, your heart will be where your treasure is. You know, as we give this morning, you know, it's, it's more about faith. It's more about our heart than it is the value of what we're giving. So thank you, church, for your generosity and bless you as you give this morning. Well, I'd love to officially welcome you to church. Um, it's so glad that you could join us online. Um, wherever it is that you're watching from. Um, if you would like to connect with us, um, if you're watching from live.gc.org.au, to the right of your screen, there's a tab that says connect. If you fill in your details there, our team would love to get in contact with you and get you connected with the life of the church. You know, Or if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, simply just put connect as a message in the chat and one of our team will follow you up because we would love to get to know you, to get connected with you. you now our team have put some resources together um, just to help you in, in your week, in your worship, in your prayer, taking communion with your family, um, as well as resources for your kids, a, a full kids curriculum that your children can do at home. Um, to see those, you just need to go to gc.org.au forward slash resources. Um, and we pray that those would bless you and they would bless your family. And we've also launched our Gateway blog um, because we have such an amazing church full of amazing people um, with many talents in, in so many different spheres. So we wanted to make sure that, that we could impart knowledge and wisdom and encouragement into each other. Um, so we currently have three diverse blog posts at gc.org.au forward slash blog um, just to help you in your relationship with God, in your development as a person. Um, we pray that those encourage you as well. Well, in a moment, we're going to hear an encouraging message uh, from Renu. So just as we get ready to, to hear the word this morning, um, we've loaded her notes into the Bible app. Um, so you just, if you've got the Bible app, you just need to go to more and then events, search Gateway Church Geelong and the notes are there so that you can take your own notes alongside them um, and follow along with the Bible verses. Um, so get ready because Renu has a word in season for you today to encourage you and your family. Um, and we'll be back in just a minute. morning church. I'm so excited that you're joining us here this morning. This morning as we continue on talking about lessons in the journey, I want to share with you a lesson in the journey that God's been teaching me about. It's about emotions, loss and finding contentment. So if you're taking notes, that's the title of my message, emotions, loss and finding contentment. Church, the world we're living in today is vastly changed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's constantly evolving. There's many uncertainties in the world. The familiar way of life we're used to is somewhat evolving and changing every day. We are learning and navigating new normals. And when I read on that, all that, it sounds a little bit bleak, but I, can I encourage you? As it says in Hebrews 6.19, we have a hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. So when we hear all that about what's going on in the world, 
What's our response as followers of Jesus? How do we navigate this journey where we experience change, different environments, a range of emotions and loss? Let's look at the Apostle Paul. He was someone in the Bible who knew about these things. He knew about emotions, he knew about loss, and he knew how to find contentment. To give you a bit of background, Paul's ministry involved sharing the good news of Jesus to many. As a result of his ministry, he did end up in prison multiple times. The book of Philippians is Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. It's actually written whilst he's in prison. The church in Philippi had generously supported Paul throughout his ministry, and when they heard he was in prison, they once again sent a contribution. His letter to the church in Philippi is to encourage them, but also to thank them for the gift they had sent. So let's read from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 13. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have a chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. I love that passage of scripture. Despite Paul being in prison, his overall theme with it is joyful. When we look earlier in Philippians in chapter one, he says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. In Philippians 1.18, Paul says, but what does it matter? The important thing that is in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Church, Paul is in, is in prison. Prison's not an easy place, and this is his response. His response is joyful. But I look at that, and I'm fairly confident that Paul didn't arrive at this place of joy from day one. In other letters, we see Paul sharing of different emotions he experiences. He shares of anguish, despair, anxiety, and fear, all real emotions he experienced. In Philippians 2, verses 27 to 28, Paul expresses real emotions about his friend who was unwell. Philippians 2, 27 to 28. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him again, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. Real emotions there, church, sorrow upon sorrow, that I may have less anxiety. Interestingly, the phrase less anxiety used is translated from the Greek word alupos, which means to be free from grief and pain or less sorrowful. Church, how encouraging that Paul experiences all these emotions, anxiousness, grief, and sorrow, and yet he was joyful. So what does that mean for you and I today? Church, can I encourage you that emotions are part of how we created? Acknowledge how you feel. Allow yourself to experience emotions. Experiencing emotions is normal and healthy. I think sometimes our culture is one where we're sort of soldier on people, we suppress all emotions, just get on with it. But can I encourage you, again, experiencing emotions is normal and healthy. There are a range of emotions we can experience at different times. And just as Paul did, Jesus too experienced a range of emotions. Before he was to face the cross, Jesus was distressed and anguished. We read in Luke chapter 22, verse 44, and being in agony, deeply distressed and anguish, almost to the point of death, he prayed more intently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. 
when Jesus went to see Lazarus, his friend who was dead, we read in John 11:33, when Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews who had come with her also sobbing, he was deeply moved in spirit to the point of anger at the sorrow caused by death. Church, Jesus felt emotions too. And in the world we're living in, with the pandemic, with violence, an uncertain economic future, we too may experience similar emotions. Anguish, deep distress, anger, sorrow. Church, Jesus understands our emotions. He experienced them too. Can I encourage you again that experiencing emotions is not bad. However, what we do with them does matter. Acknowledging emotions doesn't mean they have to dictate everything you say, do, and think. You can experience them without being controlled by them. As we pursue health in all areas, church, including emotional health, allow yourselves to experience emotions. Allow yourselves to work through the emotions that you feel. And as you do, also allow yourself to grieve. Grief is a normal response or reaction to loss. Grief can affect affect a person in many ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Through this COVID-19 pandemic, we have all potentially experienced some sort of loss. Loss of loved ones, loss of community, loss of fellowship or social interaction, loss of a familiar way of life, loss of income, loss of work. There's a range of losses that we can experience here. And all these are real losses. And with loss comes grief. Each person's grief is their own, and different people grieve differently. I can share personally of how I was impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, when we first went into isolation, it was a hard time for me. I didn't recognize it as grief then. I'm single, my family lives overseas. And the communities that had become my family here, my church family, my community at the gym, they were suddenly taken away. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I'm on my own here. The truth was I wasn't, but that's how I felt. And there was this heaviness upon me. There was this, this sadness, this sense of life is hard, things are tough. But, you know, being me, my natural tendency, the whole soldier on thing, I withdrew from, from anything that could possibly touch those sort of emotions, bring them to the surface, and I've got super busy, you know, busy with work, busy with training at home, doing all the things to not feel and not allow myself to grieve. But I'm so thankful that God brought a trusted friend along. You know, this friend said to me, you know, we can see that you're hurting. We know that you're hurting. And through that, the Holy Spirit really began to work in my heart to go, oh, actually I am. Actually, I am going through some hard things. I am feeling these things. And really, he pinpointed to me that this was grief that I was experiencing, that I was experiencing a loss of all these things I knew, and I had to go on a journey of working through those things. And it's the same for you this morning, church. Jesus understands your grief and loss. We read in Isaiah 53, verse 3, He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Can I encourage you, church? Can I assure you this morning that God is there for you in the midst of your loss to bring comfort and healing? Just as he was there for me, he's there for you this morning. In 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 to 4, we read, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, healing their pain and comforting their sorrow. How good is our God, church? You know, just see, provided that comfort for me, He can do the same for you. Just see, heals my pain and comforts my sorrow, He will do the same for you. So, church, give yourself permission to grieve. Go on the journey to grieve what is lost. Let God heal your pain and comfort your sorrow. Can I encourage you, don't do this journey alone. Like someone had to speak into my life, talk to a trusted friend or a leader or speak to a professional, whether that be your doctor, psychologist, counselor or pastor. We all need each other, church. 
And in this time, suppressing emotions and grief are not helpful. An analogy I was reminded of as I thought about suppressing emotions and grief is a jack-in-the-box. A jack-in-the-box is a bit of an old-school toy, but if you know how it works, you pop the jack down in the box, and then you've got a crank that you can turn and turn and turn, and eventually, jack pops out of the box. And you know, emotions and grief can sometimes be a little bit like that. So you pop the emotions in, you pop the grief in, you close it all in, shut it down, hopefully it stays in there. But you know, as the pressures of life come, as that crank gets turned, pressure comes, things happen in our life, and you know what, eventually, Jack's gonna pop out of the box. And that's, and that's what can be with our emotions. Those grief, those feelings of grief, those emotions will surface at some stage. So can I encourage you, deal with it early. Stay on the course of working through it so it doesn't become an outburst. Start the journey or stay on the course of working through your emotions and grief. The good news, though, the church this morning, the good news, it's not all loss and grief. While we're on this journey of working through emotions and loss, we can learn to find contentment. I love Paul's declaration in that scripture in Philippians 4 that we read in verses 11 to 13. Here's what he says. Not that I was ever in need, for I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. We look at Paul's situation and it was hard. It's very possible that he was discouraged at times, that he was dissatisfied or disenfranchised with where he was at. See, church, Paul was aware of his situation. Contentment is not a blissful ignorance or an unawares of what's going on around you. Instead, contentment is knowing God will provide everything we need, trusting him for all things, and being with peace with whatever situation or circumstance we are in, knowing that he's got us. In verse 12 and 13, we see that Paul learned to be content. He learned the secret of living in every situation. He learned it. It didn't just happen instantaneously. It wasn't like he woke up one morning and, yep, I'm content. Learned is a verb. It's an action. Learning contentment requires action. But the encouraging thing we can see is in verse 13, for I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Paul was empowered by God to learn to be content. Christ gave him strength to do it. So let me encourage you, church, Action plus God-given strength are keys to learning contentment. So how do we do this? How do we start to learn to be content in the midst of whatever situation we are in? Let me share a few keys that God has been teaching me about. Firstly, trust that he is our source and that he has the best for us. Multiple times in the book of Philippians, we see Paul illustrating that we can trust God. In Philippians 4.19, he says, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs, all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. In Philippians 1.6, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. He will supply all your needs, guys. He will continue to finish the good work he started in you. Going back to Philippians 4, 6, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Church, we can tell him what we need. Tell God what you need. It says it plainly there. Our God is good. He has your highest and best interests at all times. You and I can trust him. And again, this is a journey that I've been on Earlier this year, I put a deposit on a block of land in Leopold, and it doesn't title till next year, but soon after I put the deposit on it, everything started with COVID-19. And I remember just being like, oh gosh, what do I do here? Like, will I have a job next year? Will the builders put their prices up? And there's all these different thoughts that can go through my mind. But I really had to go, do you know what, God, I'm gonna trust you in this. You have led me in this direction, so I know you will see it through. And that gave me such peace, that gave me such assurance, because I know he's on the throne, he is my source. Whatever's happening around me, he has the best for me, and he is my source. 
Hear my heart here this morning, church. Trusting God is not an excuse to be complacent or cruise through life. You know that old phrase on bumper stickers that say, I trust God, but I lock my car? That same idea. That you and I still have to take ownership for our journey and growth. There's still things that we need to do, pursuing all that God has for us. Comes back to that statement I made earlier, that learning to be content involves God-given strength, but it also requires action from us. So this morning, as we learn to be content, trust that he's our source and that he is the best for you and I. Secondly, in learning to be content, we can cultivate a heart of gratefulness and thankfulness. I believe it's really hard to be someone who is discontent and grateful. They don't seem to go hand in hand. In Philippians 4, 6, we read about thanking God for all he has done. We read again in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5, 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong in Christ Jesus. It says thankful in all circumstances, not in some circumstances, not if I feel like it, not if it's a good day, but in all circumstances. In all circumstances, church, you and I can find something to be thankful for. The even better news is that gratefulness and thankfulness is good for you. They're good for your health. To quote an article by Harvard Health Publishing, in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. I don't know about you, but they all sound like really good things. For positive emotions, relish good experience, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. Church, in the midst of our situations, let's look for opportunities to be thankful. So as we learn to be content, we can trust that he is our source and that he is the best for us. We can cultivate a heart of gratefulness and thankfulness. And thirdly, as the worship team comes, we can fix our thoughts on what is good. Philippians 4 verses 8 to 9 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. As we fix our things on things that are good, it's not some super spiritual amnesia that we forget everything that's happening around us and we block out reality but it's a shifting of our thoughts. It involves being deliberate in the thoughts that you focus on. A thought may come into your mind, but then you have the choice of what you do with it. You can take captive every thought and make it obedient to truth. You can bring those thoughts to the Holy Spirit and say, he's the one who is all truth. What's going on here? What should be my response here? In 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Again, we can bring those thoughts to the Holy Spirit and say, is this truth or is this my perception? But you can also ask God to help you, allowing him to change the way you think. Again, we've got our part to do, but it's God-given strength that helps us to learn this. We read in Romans 12 too, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let God transform you, church, into a new person by changing the way you think. And hey, I'll be the first to admit, I'm still a work in progress with this. You know, coming back to everything that was happening with the pandemic and the uncertainty about the economy, you know, there's talk of recession and then people talk up, throw out words like the 10-year depression is coming. And, you know, if you're anything like me, sometimes you go, oh, what's going to happen? You know, you start going down this rabbit hole of anxious thoughts. You start with one anxious thought, well, I still have a job. How am I going to pay for this? If I have a mortgage, how am I going to pay for that? And before you know that, you're way down that rabbit hole of uncertain thoughts and anxious thoughts. But I've been on this journey of learning to take every thought captive. Taking those thoughts captive and bringing them to the Holy Spirit who is all truth. Seeking His truth and His word. Allowing Him to renew my thinking and replace anxious thoughts and feelings with His truth. 
So can I encourage you this morning, church, let's be deliberate with this. Let's go on that journey of fixing our thoughts on what is good. Let's take captive thoughts that are not true and line them up with truth. Let's allow God to transform us by changing the way we think. As I wrap up, I recently, recently listened to a podcast by Dr. Brene Brown. And a quote that was said in it is, we are experiencing a collective loss of the world we know and lived in before the pandemic. And there's truth in that. We are experiencing loss of the world we know. But can I encourage you this morning, church? There is so much more to the story. God is still on the throne this morning, church. He is your source and you can trust in Him. Let's go on this journey of acknowledging our emotions, acknowledging how you feel, and allow Him to come and meet you in your sorrow, in your pain, in your grief. He's the God of all comfort. He heals the brokenhearted and restores your soul. And though we may, we may experience different emotions and grief, we can learn to be content, even joyful. We can grow in contentment through cultivating a heart of gratitude and fixing our thoughts on what is good. So church, let's go on this journey together. When I walked in this morning, I was just drawn to our scripture for the year again. Ephesians 3 verse 20, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your highest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo him all. For his miraculous power constantly energizes you. Church, this is the God we serve. This is the God we follow. So let's go on this journey of working through our emotions and loss. Let's learn to find contentment in the midst of our circumstances. Bless you, church. Come and consume God, all oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Church, let's worship Him. Come and consume God, all oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God, all oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Oh. Come and consume God, oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. i 
your permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God. Oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God. Oh, we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you, we want you. Church, in this moment right now, if those anxieties and worries, like Renu was talking about, have been building up inside of you, I just feel right now, just believe that God is wanting to minister to you, that He's wanting to soothe you. And I can testify that in my last couple of weeks that God has come and done the same for me when those anxieties started to gather inside me. But God is a God who is a God of comfort and peace. And as the band keeps playing, allow those things to fall at His feet. He said, come and lay your burdens at my feet. And right now, church, that's what God is going to do. He's going to come take your burdens and soothe you. So come and consume God who we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God who we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. God, oh, we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. Oh, we want you. Come and consume God, oh, we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. Oh, we want you. Yeah, this morning, just as just this message has gone out into your, your lounge room or where you are today. I, I want to encourage you that God's heart is for you. God loves you, loves you so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross, be buried and rise again on the third day. And I, I, want, I want to encourage you today that uh, even in the midst of everything that's going on, the chaos that's going on, the uncertainty that's going on, now more than ever, we all find ourselves in this moment where we need to acknowledge that, that Jesus is Lord and that we need Him. We can't do this life alone by ourselves. And so if that's you today, you find yourself in this place where you don't know Jesus personally, but you do find yourself in the bind of everything that's going on. God sent His Son, Jesus, so that you could have freedom so that you could be loved and have salvation and know God personally, so that you could be in a relationship with Him. So even at this very moment in time, if that's you, I want want to give you the opportunity to, to come into relationship with God. God sent His Son, Jesus, so that you could have that opportunity. There's no other secret handshakes or rules. It's as simple as that. God loves you. And when you acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, God raised Him from the dead. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 9 that you will be saved. So right where you are right now, I'm going to pray a prayer. and I'm going to encourage you to, to pray this prayer after me. Wherever you are today, can, can I encourage you, can you pray this prayer with everyone who's praying it for the first time or, or praying, it, praying it again? Why don't we close our eyes for a moment? Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you sent your son to die for me, to be buried and rise again. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and you raised him from the dead. I surrender my life to you. I choose to be a follower of Jesus. I repent of my sin and I step into my freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
I just want to encourage you today that if you made that decision for the first time, don't leave it there. There's somewhere to go next. You can go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps. And all the information about what it means to follow Jesus and the decision you've just made and also to get in contact with us so that we can encourage you on that journey as well. Even if you don't live in Geelong, can I encourage you, go to, go to that website, put your details. And if you're watching right now live online, can I encourage you just connect through the chat box, connect through a message to us, whatever works for you. We, we want to encourage you in that journey. For every single person who's watching this live on Sunday morning or you're watching this at a later time, I want to encourage you, this is your moment. Maybe, maybe you, just like me, over the past couple of weeks, have felt this weird uneasiness of, of what's going on. And it wasn't until last, or a couple of Wednesday nights ago, that as I was sitting and talking to people, that I acknowledged that this is this is loss this is grief this is your moment to over this next week or so just to spend some time with god the unsettling feeling that you may have just chalked down to oh it's because everything's up in the air and it feels anxious maybe there's more going on than what you realize because everything that you held dear and normal is no longer normal can I encourage you to spend some time with Jesus? Allow Him to minister to you, to speak to you. Get into, like, like Rano said, get in contact with someone to talk through it. I also want to speak for a moment into the fact that if, if there's been some hurt, particularly over this past week, that has, has been revealed in your heart, I, I just want our heart goes out to you, whether it's because of the way that you were treated through childhood with school, workplace, whether it's because the color of your skin or you're just different to other people. I, I, I want to encourage you that we are, we are with you. Our hearts are with you. Uh, we acknowledge the fact that your hurt is real, just like we're talking about this morning, that emotions are real. Yet, yes, it's real. And we, we just want our heart to, to be known to you today. You're not alone in this. And from, a, from your pastor to you right now, if there's anything that I can do to sit with you, and talk with you my door is always open you can call the church call my mobile email the church book an appointment online through the church website whatever you need to do i just want to make make sure you understand we are always available and it's not so that i can give you a whole lot of answers that you don't want i just want to be able to sit with you and share the heart of god and the love of god with you and listen to what you've got to say we we love you and uh, I just want you to understand that this church, the reason we preach messages like we did today, if you're watching for the first time, you don't know who we are. We believe that God's church, the church of Jesus Christ, is meant to be healthy. Healthy in every area, spiritually, physically, and emotionally meant to be healthy. And we, we believe it and we do our best to, to walk the walk and talk the talk. No, we're not perfect. Jesus is perfect. And we're aiming to be more Christ-like, but we acknowledge the fact that God has called us to, to be better in these areas. And so I, I, just, I just want to encourage you with that today. Uh, I, I think it would be, uh, be really good right now. The, ser the service is officially over, but I think it'd be really good just to, just to finish with some praise this morning. Um, we just want to praise Jesus because He is the author, the finisher, and the perfecter. Amen. Get ready to dance in your lounge room. Stand up. Why don't we praise Jesus today? God bless you, church. Not a day has gone by. Not a moment in time. I wasn't held by your arm. And seen with your eyes All the tears I have shed All the times that I've heard My every heartache you failed My every prayer you have heard I finally found my home The place where I belong Here in your love Here in your love My heart is set on fire You take me even higher
can separate us Nothing can tear us apart Cause you're in my every state And I'm holding on to your heart I finally found my home The place where I belong Here in your love Here in your love Well, you thought you'd got away with it, Dave, but I just want to wish Dave Jackson a big happy birthday today. Happy we love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. To David Jackson today. Oh, 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 oh.